Good evening, the time being 7 p.m. on August 22nd, 2022. All members of the planning board being present, call this meeting to order. Uh, we'll, uh, welcome Mr. Champa for his first meeting this evening. Uh, he recently was put in place to finish out Mr. Ryder's term for this year. And uh, good luck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, so moving on, we'll move to agenda item A, which is approval of minutes. We have June 27th and July 18th. Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve the July 27th, uh, June 27th meeting uh, right. minutes. All right, a motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries unanimous. And uh, Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve the July 18th minutes as well. All right, motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, takes care of minutes. Moving on to agenda item B, committee reports, administrative actions. Do any of the members have any committee reports they wish to make at this time? Um, yes, just <clears throat> on the uh, reuse committee. It seems to be, which I think there is a meeting right now, uh, which is not easy. Um, I want to bring some information to them because they seem not to be up to speed on the use of maybe the school for senior housing. Um, so I was almost beating my head against the wall at the last meeting. And I didn't want to say we should have been aware of this, but I did. And um, so I just want to be, I want to get to the chairman and let him know that we're not doing the right thing by the house, the, the, like the North Street School. Could be a perfect pot, spot for it. A couple of people shot it down one being the chairman and one being uh, Slickman, the select board representative. So I, I, I'm not sure why, but then we get this package of the funds, and I hear about the veterans, the veterans housing, and I, I wonder if we're all on the same page. Because it seems like we're not. So, um, without getting too upset, because I was very upset about this, and uh, more so the funding down there. But that's someone else's responsibility, and uh, um, that's all. All right, thank you very much. So, Mr. Chairman, just uh, for clarification, Mr. Fowler, so. The North Street School and Trahan are the two facilities. Yes. And where, where was the uh, elderly housing proposed for? It was brought up that the senior housing could be used at the North Street School. And it didn't seem like it carried much uh, weight. So, um, and I was upset when this meeting is at the same time as this meeting. Yeah. So, as always. In fact, I'm always, I'd like to go down there if I may. If you'd like to step out for a minute, Mr. Fowler, that's completely yes. up to you. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, so we'll try and get through a couple of these and we'll, uh, we'll do those and then we'll give Mr. Fowler a couple minutes to say his piece down the road and then we'll uh, move back to these. Um, yeah, I, I know, you know, just to continue on that part of the discussion, just on the, you know, on the reuse, you know, I mean, I know that that, that committee's been going on, you know, for a while. I know they've got a, um, I think it's a questionnaire that they want to get out, or they have out, I forget which. They're preparing for release now, okay. yes. Yeah, so they want to get a questionnaire out for folks. Um, you know, I did, I did raise a question recently, just to FYI for myself, just on whether or not, you know, as long as the property remains owned by the town, there's a little bit of wiggle room um, in terms of what it's zoned for, because municipal use, which is what it would still be, unless and until 
the town relinquishes it has a lot more options than what the parcel will be zoned for after that, um, should it go to a private owner. So, um, you know, I'm hoping, and you know, obviously we'll wait and see where they end up, um, that that's at least something that's considered as well before any final decisions are made on sale of the property, for example, because obviously then it locks in with the zoning that's now been put in place with the new zoning law. So hopefully, you know, that, that's one of the considerations that they have. Um, if it turns out that's not what they want to go, that's fine, as long as that's something that's um, at least considered, because, I mean, there are some possible, you know, uses that might be, you know, uh, available um, if it remains a municipal property. So. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm just curious, what is the, um, what is the gen general consensus of the, um, of the reuse committee at this point, and do we have any idea on that? Or? I, I couldn't tell you what their general consensus is. I, I, I presume um, that by sending out the, uh, the questionnaire, it's to get just a little more feedback before they come up with a final um, recommendation to uh, the select board. Um, for what they think should go there. I mean, ultimately, it's it's a recommendation. You know, right. the select board's you know sure. really in the final uh, decision making position for you know what happens. So, um, if something comes up that's maybe out of left field, but makes sense, you know, it may just never never come up in there, and who knows? So, but thank you. Yeah, I thought, Mr. Chairman, as well. I thought, Mr. Duffy, that they were still up in the air as far as where they were going. They're trying to get a direction as to go. They're exploring all avenues. They haven't finalized anything yet. I think that'll come with, with the survey to some degree and, and by the committee. And then financing is always going to be a problem. You know what they want to do. I had heard a crazy number of $2 million to tear the building down. I heard that was a number that was tossed about, but that just seems like it's insane just to tear it down. But uh, that was the Trahan School. But, uh, I mean, uh, I'd be all in favor of doing some, you know, senior housing in town. So, but. all right, that takes care of that. We have Mr. Fowler back. Uh, any other committee report comments? Anyone wish to make? I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. The morning. All set. All right. Moving on to agenda item B2, 2500, 2504 Main Street, uh, approval not required plan. Good evening. My name is Attorney Stephen Rodman. Hold on a second. Let me just wait till you get settled. That way it picks it up on the uh, recording and the mic. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Attorney Stephen Rodman on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is an a &R plan. I'm um, seeking your approval. Um, the genesis of this plan was that in 1988, the planning board issued a variant for a, the subdivision that you see before you. Um, and for that, the property that the Sal's Pizza is on, and at the time, uh, there were three items in that variance that had to be done before a certificate of occupancy would be issued. Um, the two paper streets had to be dissolved. Um, the remaining land on the left side up front had to be conveyed to the condominium, and an access easement for the Sal's lot had to be given. None of those three things were ever accomplished. One, which creates a title issue for the sales property because it does not have any access on Main Street. So over the past year, we've been in front of the land court to petition everyone's rights, to making sure this was done properly. We have now a land court judgment um, taking care of those three items. The paper streets are dissolved. Um, the property which is supposed to go to the condominium is now in the name of the condominium and an access easement is in place. Based on the land court judgment, the judge has approved this plan in front of you. We are just now confirming the property lines and then everything will go to record with the registry of deeds. Okay. Uh, we'll start Mr. Fatalia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have no problem with the, uh, the lines being drawn. Um, so you said three issues. Now, will they have access to Main Street now? Now they they now have an access through the easement. Okay. They never were given the easement rights that they were okay. supposed to be given. So they'll have to go to to Mass DOT to get 
the it, curb cuts? No, there, there won't be any curb cuts. The, the access way, the same way they've used oh, okay. for the past oh, 20 you. years is now formal. Yeah. Uh, but without that, we, that property really can't be conveyed without some dedicated rights. Right, right, okay. Which is done okay, any, uh, any plans? For the, the for the project or uh, the site or um, this will now allow the sales property to be sold. Um, there have been many different buyers over the years, and all of them have backed out because of this issue. Yeah. It will now allow that to be sold and hopefully rehab into something that can be used again. So it'll be more marketable, I'm sure. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Duffy. Uh, I think I'm all set too with that, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fowler. Likewise. Mr. Chair, uh, I'm fine, sir. Thank you. All right, the chair is fine as well. So with that, uh, what is the pleasure of the board? Make a motion to approve the um, plan for 2500-2504 Main Street as proposed. All right, we have, an, we have a motion to endorse the a &R plan as submitted. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries unanimous. Good luck. Um, the plan will get signed, and you can check with the office about getting it picked up, and so you can go get registered. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Nice I'll be in touch tomorrow. Great. Thank you. All right. Moving on to agenda item B3, Tom Planner's report, um, and we have a subsection A, housing production plan discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll start with my um, my regular comments, and then I'll move on to the um, the brief slideshow. So just a few updates on some projects on Main Street. I'll start right right next door here at 1060 Main Street. The old skewers um, has officially opened as Paragrill on uh, as of August 9th and has a full menu and online ordering available. Um, a few of us from the office uh, paid them a visit, and the inside looks really nice. And um, I will editorialize here and say the food was very good. Um, next item, 1800 Main Street, the old Eastern Bank, um, nearly a Starbucks. They are aiming for an opening date during September of this year. The signed special permit was released from its appeal period last week, and the final touches on their building permits are in process right now. Next bit, Treehouse, moving into 1880 Main Street um, slash 85 Livingston Street this year and, and most, mostly into next year. They are moving forward with their state and federal licensing for the brewery, and they're working on their local licensing uh, before the select board in the next few weeks. Do you know, we never did ask them, but was their intention, once they're done remodeling the separate building, to start with the online orders? Yes. Even before that, anything else, right? Okay. Their That's intention right. is for that to come sure. first, yes. Okay. Um, next item, La Vida Dolce, uh, 1866 Main Street, the old Santander Bank. Um, so far, I checked with the building and the health department. The pipes have been laid. The fire suppression work has been completed in the next steps as of last Thursday and Friday where they were pouring the concrete for the floor. Um, the rest of the unit is a shell ready for build out and the external grease trap does still need to be installed, which will be a major undertaking and probably rather um, disruptive to that parking lot. So keep an eye out for that in the next few weeks, hopefully before the ground starts to freeze in the fall. Um, Backing up Main Street, we're going to head to 836. That's the old Mirabella's Bakery, <clears throat> Berlundi, um, the Italian restaurant based out of Waltham. They have submitted their building permit applications for final renovations as they already completed their exploratory demolition work. And the final kitchen plans are with the health department. And my understanding is that there were very few issues and they should be moving forward shortly. Um, early looks at their proposed menu suggest a wide variety of Italian food and it, it looks really nice. Um, last update here, uh, Eco Auto moving into 623 Main Street, the old Nissan dealership. Um, they have their building permits in hand, their class two auto license is all set, and we should start seeing some significant activity there soon. So that's really exciting. Um, and now um, if we could turn to the screen here, and Stephen is going to be so kind as to turn down the lights. Thank you. All right, so um, this bit right here, the assistant town manager and I have been working with NIMCOG to put together the town's latest housing production plan. I've included hard copies of the presentation in your packets and we'll go through the slides briefly here. Um, full disclosure, I did not build these slides, so forgive any um, stumbling <laughs> throughout. Um, Basically, why do we need a housing plan? So this is something that we have in place um, 
just we I think we've had I think we got our first one in 2007 and they are renewed every five years um, from a higher level the region the state and the country is in a significant affordable housing crisis um, there are some statistics here 31.8 percent of households in our region and 30 percent point three in Tewksbury pay more than 30 percent of their income um, which suggests just what we've seen probably anecdotally that housing costs are clearly on the rise for both renters and owners. Um, and basically there, there needs to be some, um, some addressing here on the ground. The town currently is still at its 10% affordable housing inventory, um, but we're still waiting for those 2020 census numbers to drop in and make those anticipated adjustments. So this actually, I think, is really interesting. Um, what is considered affordable in our region, and you know, it's no surprise that the Northeast, Massachusetts in general, probably particularly the Boston metro area, um, is one of the highest cost of living areas in the country, probably aside from Silicon Valley. And we're looking at the, um, the income rates that count towards affordable housing. So. 80% adjusted uh, in average median income for fiscal year 22 is, for a family of three is $80,000. So I think sometimes when we think of affordable housing, we don't think, we think very, very low or no income, but we're talking people who have a household income of $80,000 can't find housing. So, you know, this is why we need to work towards better planning for affordable housing in the community, and it's why we have the provisions in our bylaw that help us get there. <clears throat> And this is just a bit of an overview of what the subsidized housing inventory is. I won't go through every single point, but this is something that's been kind of discussed ad nauseum um, as you know, 40B projects come up um, that are on the horizon at the time. Um, and units, let's see, units that are naturally affordable, units not at 80%, but still income restricted, units for which the developer didn't meet reporting and other requirements, units that slipped through the cracks. So, you know, we. I will say that the assistant town manager has done an excellent job at making sure that we are counting every last unit, but you know, there's always that caveat that maybe something's missing, but he has a pretty tight grasp on the units that we do have in town, making sure that we're getting credit for all of them. And just a bit of a more nuanced um, bit is that if 25% of our rental property is affordable, then 100% of the units may be counted. Um, an example of that is the, the, Ames, the lodge at Ames Pond, and it would likely be any proposed developments that you know, are in the rumor mill for um, Ames Pond right now. So this just shows our progress through um, the years towards the subsidized housing inventory from 2011 to 2022. Um, we've basically come up to the, the bare minimum 10% goal, um, made excellent strides uh, you know, in the last decade or so. Um, but what we're probably gonna end up seeing is that it dips below that 10% once the 2020 numbers come out, which is you know, the reason we wanna keep moving towards this stuff. And this is also no surprise to anyone that the Tewksbury median home sales price in the last decade has just skyrocketed. Um, I myself bought in 2016, and I can't believe the prices that are here now. If they, if they were what they are now then, I don't think I'd be living here. <laughs> um, and, you know, even the rental prices aren't so far off. If you were to knock this down into the, in, you know, in the monthly mortgage payments, the rental prices are similar, if not worse just because of the high demand. And this is just some more statistics about the housing cost burden for um, folks in Tewksbury specifically. And just broken down my family type, um, you can see that um, the elderly and small families are paying some of the most costs toward their housing. Oops. All right, so housing production plan, that's what we're coming into now. Now, we're not starting from scratch. We are working from an old um, housing production plan from 2017. Um, and we are basically updating all of the existing conditions um, from the previous, um, the previous plan. So updating the demographics, the income, the, um, the different housing challenges in town, 
so far, the numbers haven't come off to be wildly different from 2017, but they are worth um, updating to make sure that we're um, that we're capturing as much data as we need in order to make educated decisions about housing in town. And the, cur the goal to add to the housing production plan would to have at least a half a percent of subsidized housing production annually to make sure that we're keeping up with the next, um, the next census in 2030. Um, the goals being to set a broad set of goals for the vision of housing based on comprehensive needs assessment. So like I said on the previous slide, updating all of the demographics and other information to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the community. So if we had an increase in um, you know, small families, two and three and four people, do we have more larger families? Are we looking at um, single income folks and just kind of seeing where the, where the direction is heading? <clears throat> All right here, so we're looking at the um, specific implementation strategies. That's gonna be something we develop. You know, It could be tools of the zoning bylaw, which we've already kind of gotten into with the new zoning bylaw, making sure that the, um, the folks that are coming in for residential developments are not allowed for fee in lieu of in the multifamily, and they only may do it for single family home subdivisions if we are at our 10%. Um, and I'm not telling you folks anything you don't know. There's not a lot of undeveloped land in town, so I don't know how many big subdivisions we're gonna get. So this is really gonna help us in the multifamily development um, area. And a part of that implementation strategy is going to be identifying some of the parcels that we do have left that would be poised for either redevelopment or new development. And um, even uh, alluding to the discussion that we had earlier about the reuse committee, what public and private land do we have um, available that could help serve these needs? Um, and then, of course, regional collaboration. So, you know, like I said, this is being um, accomplished through and with NIMCOG, um, their housing and economic development coordinator, and their new developer, uh, developer, excuse me, their new director, Jenny Wright. All right, so right now we're in the middle of doing the, comp uh, the completion of the comprehensive needs assessment that I mentioned earlier. The next step is going to be the public outreach component. Um, so this is you know, some of the first starts of it. Um, the assistant town manager met with the select board on August 9th to go through this um, presentation with them as well with the assistance of Chris Hayes from NIMCOG. Um, and taking all of the information from the comprehensive needs assessment and kind of you know workshop that workshopping that with the public, we're going to go to the farmers market and probably have a couple of public input sessions, perhaps at the library, just places that are more accessible to folks because um, coming into this building isn't everybody's cup of tea. So we want to make sure that we're going into the community to make sure that we're meeting people where they're at so that they can understand um, some of the details of this because it does affect them. And once, bless you, okay. once the um, the public outreach component is complete, and we kind of have been able to use the public as our sounding board for the strategies and seeing if we are missing anything, filling any gaps. Um, we'll be able to incorporate that into our um, our goals and strategies assessment for the um, for the housing production plan, and that'll go to staff for um, you know more review. Um, and then finally, when the entire plan is complete, it'll go to the planning board and the select board for a formal vote before it is adopted and sent off to DHCD. And um, this is the information for our, um, our NIMCOG representative that's been helping us out, Chris Hayes, Housing and Economic Development Planner. Um, if you folks have any questions, um, you may reach out to Chris directly if you like, but you're also welcome to send the comments to me and I'm happy to get them out. Can you go back to the one with the graph on it? Which one? Um, number five. Number five. Yes. Okay. So, again, just because we're working off, you know, presumptions, but you know, we'll get a new number. It's going to drop us probably drop us below ten. Presuming if the project as as last put forward for Ames Pond mm -hmm. goes through, and they're counted. Where would that put us, ballpark? Back over 10%, presumably. No, I know, but do you yeah. know how much? I don't. Um, we are projected to be approximately 100 units below once the census numbers shake out, give or take a little bit. Um, and then depending on what the final product is um, at Ames Pond, we'll determine how far we are over. Okay. 
But I mean, at that number, you've got to be at least closing in on the 11. Yeah, if roughly. Somewhere between 11, 11 Probably. and 5. So right off the bat, sort of, you could find yourself above the, the, the 10 percent at least, mm -hmm. but possibly in that goal area, mm -hmm. just from that one thing. Possibly, yes. The byproduct of that being that for basically the next decade, no one can do what most people refer to as a forced 40B project Correct. in Tewksbury, which means if you want to do anything like that, what you have to do is a LIP, which is a local initiative petition, which is often referred to as a friendly 40B, which gives the town a lot more control and input if they want something like that. Correct. Okay. So a benefit, basically, yes. at that point. Yep, we get the affordable housing, but we also maintain a little bit more leverage than we would normally have, yes. Right. And they can't turn around and threaten the, we'll do it however we feel like doing it anymore. Correct. For at least a decade, give or take. So my other thing was, and because I'm the one who seems to pound my head against a wall with this, and I did it all throughout the new zoning bylaw, when we look at those, those medium, is it the next one? Can you go to the next slide? The, the median prices. I come back once again to my comments that I've made numerous times about the fact that we force acre size lots as the only option in town. So an example being Chandler Street. The houses being put on Chandler Street, I'm just gonna ballpark it. They're above that number, right? Yes. Probably three quarters of a million dollars? Yes. Okay, that's what you end up with. You end up with all those at three quarters of a million dollars, and that's the option because everybody basically just blows off the idea of having smaller lots than an acre, which for anyone who's unsure is a football field without the end zones. That's how big an acre is. So that's the only option here. So when we're worried about or talking about the median prices like that, it's because if you have to build on an acre and that's your only choice, you're building three quarters of a million dollar or more homes basically pricing anyone reasonable out of it. Correct. Because you don't have another option. So, you know, these things, when, when they get brought up and they get blown off sort of as, no, we don't want that, we don't want that. Remember also that these are the kind of rules that lead to the 40B rules because they're referred to as the anti-snob zoning laws because you try to do it so you can't, people can't come in. This is where you end up, you end up with over a half a million dollars as your median price of the homes. And there aren't a lot of options other than that. So it's the, you know, I hope that that's at least something that will be discussed as part of how to try to address this because I know I've brought it up, I've tried to push it and it doesn't go anywhere. But when you see these numbers, I don't know how it can't be more, more consideration put towards that um, for trying to find a way to be able to have affordable, more affordable single family homes alone. Because 750,000 and up, it's not affordable. Not for most people, not for regular people most of the time. And you know, people can argue whether you feel like you need a football field size lot or not. Most of the houses in Tewksbury don't have that. About 60% of them don't have that. So the fact that we insist on it sort of doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's me. That's all. That's it for me on this. Anybody else? Mr. Champa? A couple of thoughts. When the census comes out, um, I know from personal experience with my dad, because I handle his finances, but also from what I've read in the news, Social Security just got a nice bump for people on retirement and is about to get another one. Obviously, that amount. Um, is an unknown at this time. Will that increase in income be incorporated into whatever study is released based on the census as far as what the elderly can afford? Or is it gonna be based on the income at the time of the census and then just a snapshot of 2020? So typically NIMCOG, who does most of the research for our, um, our comprehensive needs assessments do base it on the most recent census numbers. So anything that's happened in the last couple of weeks or months likely will not be incorporated. 
Um, but I will say that you know most folks that are on Social Security income are considered very low income, and any kind of bump likely wouldn't push them out of any kind of um, running for affordable housing, nor would it impact these numbers enough to make it say, oh, no, everyone can afford housing now. So um, to, the short answer is that I, it's n probably not going to be incorporated, but I, depending on when the numbers come out, if they come out sooner, we may be able to use it, but then we don't know when the, the cutoff was for that information. So it won't be included, but I don't think it'll have a hugely negative impact on um, what we're trying to figure out here. Um, secondly, uh, oh, wait, one second, go ahead. You can finish. I'm sorry. We, was it about Social Security? Yes. Oh, okay. So but you have a different thing you want I to say, right? I have a second okay, thing. Okay, so since we're on this topic. I was just going to say that, that the bump that, that the seniors got in Social Security was kind of eaten up by an increase in, in Medicare costs. So I think that was kind of a wash. So I don't think anybody that's on Social Security is going to suddenly be in a, <laughs> in a, in a uh, you know, uh, three quarter of a million dollar. It's not gonna. It's not gonna push. No, them out certainly of, uh, not. I was just curious yeah. if um, Massachusetts obviously has a very high cost of living. As um, I'm sorry, do you go by Ms. Louder or just in this room? I think I do. <laughs> okay. As Ms. Louder was saying, um, we have a very high cost of living. So I was just curious if other things like we have a higher minimum wage than most of the country, um, and, and some other things. It, it, obviously, that's not keeping up. So what can we do to try to um, help catch up? Um, secondly, I just wanted to echo Mr. Johnson's point that even if we are at one acre lots, I mean, I walk my dogs all over town. I've seen a lot of um, different types of um, housing that takes advantage of those lots, either um, just two townhome style houses, but very nicely done. Um, you know, I think that you know, we haven't seen a lot of three bedroom capes or, you know, three bedroom, one bath ranches built in 50 years. Um, and I know, I know one particular family, I think they raised five girls in a three bedroom cape with one bathroom. Um, you know, so I don't know if the poor father built an outside shower or something, but somehow <laughs> they made it work. Um, I think it's, it speaks to um, the current society, our lifestyle. Um, you know, every, every child wants to have their own bedroom. They all want to have a yard to play in. That's a, a big reason why people come to Tewksbury, because um, they can't get that necessarily in Somerville or Cambridge or somewhere like that. But I think we can do a lot more. And I've seen it done in town, so maybe we can start to look at some of the things that have been done tastefully and th that um, offer more density for that acre of development but without making it look like, um, you know, we're, we're cramming anything in. Um, I think there's a lot of options that we could explore and maybe, you know, in the future offer up some permitting avenues to promote that. Um, and I think that would benefit in many, many ways. All right, anyone else? I have a comment, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Sorry. You know, uh, I'm on the Tewksbury Home Build uh, group, board of directors as well. And uh, we just built a three bedroom, two bath home and sold it to an affordable uh, gentleman and his family and it went for $270,000. So that's part of the affordable home, home you know, issue and, and, and how it can work. So, um, you know, I seen the numbers up there, Ms. Lauder, and you know, this board worked their, our tail off to get some of those numbers to where they are today. You know, uh, I see Mr. Plunkett out there he sat on this board for years, and I think we, we did a pretty good job on getting our numbers as, as best as we could. If not, we got the fee in lieu of, you know. Um, and now we have $5 million in that account to use for affordable housing. Um, but recently, we were going against a housing plan here by not allowing uh, the last group that came in to build a soldier on, the soldier on was the group, to build some affordable housing down on Main Street, you know? Unfortunately, the selectmen, I think, made a bad decision by not uh, endorsing some of the money that Soldier On um, needed for their project. So, and that, and that has put that project in limbo because now they're going out chasing more financing um, to get that project built. I get questions all the time. When are they gonna start building down at the veterans' home on Main Street. When are they going to start this construction? 
Well, they would have been started pretty soon, but unfortunately that Soldier On group now has to go into a group to solicit and, and, uh, and apply for more financing to get the project, because they're not going to start the project like any developer until they have the financing in place. That's just a, a no-brainer. They have to get their financing in place, and they can't do it, so now they have to go back to the state and, uh, and other sources to get more financing. Um, you know, they got about four plus million dollars, I believe, from the state. And I have a hard time with the decision made to not increase their financing request they had at the last meeting. Um, we have five million dollars in that affordable housing trust fund sitting there, all right? I don't know what the plan is because there's no really plan for it. This would have been a great plan to have Soldier On come in and build 21 affordable units down there. So, um, you know, it doesn't send a good message, in my opinion, to the state if Tewksbury is not supporting, you know, more funding for affordable housing when the state's coming in and giving them four plus million dollars. So, um, again, um, just, just put the project in limbo. So, uh, I don't know what's more deserving uh, than a veteran to get, you know, a nice break and get some affordable housing in Tewksbury. Um, so that's, that's unfortunate in my opinion. Um, they were asked to go out and chop in their pencil and get some more money. They did. When they came back again to get some additional funding, it wasn't, wasn't approved. So there's still $5 million sitting in that account uh, and not being used uh, that could have been put to good use for the, so the veterans in Tewksbury and, uh, and to get that project going. Would have helped our numbers a little bit, but uh, very disappointing in my opinion. You know, with this board worked pretty hard to get the numbers up and, uh, and, and so hasn't the Tewksbury Home Build Group. So uh, uh, I, I've, I've submitted to you guys on the planning board a, a list of the affordable, affordable units in town and what they cost. And um, the cost for that project on Main Street for the veterans would be $23,000 per unit. If you can look on that sheet, uh, a lot of the other units in town cost a hell of a lot more than $23,000. But um, that's a bargain in my eyes for the town of Tewksbury, and I don't think we took advantage of it, especially for the veterans. I mean, uh, I'm not a veteran, but I have a lot of veteran friends that need a break sometimes, you know. And there's still veterans over there, you know, services, you know, in service to our country that will be coming back looking for housing. So uh, I won't go any farther. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Taya, anyone else? All right. All right, that takes us to agenda item C, 160, 170 River Road. Uh, this is continued from our July 18th meeting. Settled. If you just state your names for the record, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, David Plunkett. I represent the applicant on the matter here before the uh, board for Trollbrook Golf Course, Inc. Also at the table is Roy Troll, the principal of the petitioner, and Mira Cousins, civil design consultant, the uh, engineer for the site. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll Turn this over to Mira to go through the plans, uh, you know, the revised plans. This has been ongoing for uh, you know an extended time period. Uh, I'll have uh, Mira go through the current uh, status of the uh, plan as it stands today, and then we'll, after the presentation, we'll address further. You know, where we are, what we're hoping to do to try to finalize and wrap this matter up as soon as possible. With that, Mr. Chairman, if I could have the uh, uh, present the plan. Thank you, David. Um, good evening. I'm your cousins with Civil Design Consultants. Um, so it's been a while uh, since we've been here. Um, you remember um, we opened the hearing back on March 14th. 
Um, so the reason for the delay was because we've been going back and forth with the town to resolve comments um, we received from DPW's review letter regarding existing drainage connections that tie into the town's drainage system. So in DPW's review letter, um, they recommended that this board require that the stormwater design to be revised to eliminate the two existing connections from the site to the river road drainage system. So although there are no specific regulations that requires elimination of existing drainage connections, um, the owner, Mr. Trull here, has agreed to disconnect the existing connections and reroute the drainage system um, back onto the site. Um, so this requires significant modification to the plans, a redesign of the whole stormwater system. So with that, since it's been a while since we were here last, I'll give a brief summary um, of the project. Um, so the site's located in the R40 zoning district. Um, the combined area of both 160 and 170 River Road is approximately 127 acres. Um, the total frontage along River Road is approximately 943 feet. Um, so the existing clubhouse is located on the 170 um, River Road parcel, and the existing indoor tennis court is located at the 160 River Road parcel. Um, so there are three existing driveway curb cuts along River Road. The proposed project uh, consists of eliminating the westernmost driveway and keeping the other two curb cuts. Um, the center driveway is proposed to be realigned and will provide access to a proposed 200 space parking lot located north of the existing um, indoor tennis building. Additionally, the, uh, the applicant proposes to reconfigure the existing parking lot um, near the clubhouse to bring it into compliance. Um, so currently there are 161 parking spaces um, based on the proposed use of the two buildings, a total of 273 parking spaces are required. Um, the proposed design would provide a total of 334 parking spaces. So stormwater management system has been designed to size, um, capture, store, and infiltrate stormwater runoff to reduce off-site peaks for all major storm events. Um, so the last time we were here, you wanted us to take a look at parking signage um, to implement, and also to implement ways for speed reduction along the new driveway. Um, so we added signage on both sides of the two driveways that would direct people on where to park. Um, so the eastern driveway signage would indicate um, golf course, tournament, and banquet hall parking only. And uh, Trollbrook golf course parking signage will be located on the western driveway. Um, we've also added multiple caution pedestrian and golf cart crossing signage throughout the site. Um, we've also added um, the slow pavement marking with a sign that spells out slow to warn drivers to slow down. Um, so we did receive a comment letter from DPW last Monday. Um, I was hoping to meet with the town en engineer to walk through his letter. Um, but because he was out last week, I wasn't able to meet with him. Um, so I'm hoping to meet with uh, Kevin Hardman this week. Um, we have no issues with uh, his review letter. Um, I think we can address all of his comments. David, is there anything else you want to add? Um, I think it, the only thing I'd like to add is, you know, going back because of the gap in time just to reflect back when we initially presented this, the discussion was related to the, the reality that Trumpbrook Golf Course is a gem within the town of Tuxburg. That the Trump family has operated for many years as business members of the community exemplary in the way they run their business, there was reference, I think Mr. Fratalian made reference in terms of how the uh, Tewksbury High School golf team gets there uh, to, to utilize the, uh, the resources. And this is, you know, again, it's something that, you know, there are certain businesses that you look to and say, 
that defines our town. This is what we look for, this is what we want to encourage, and this is what we want to uh, make certain that the business remains and remains competitive and has to do what it has to do in order to still be what it is today. Again, that jewel in the crown of uh, Tuxburg. Uh, you know, Mira was making reference to the revised um, uh, plans relative to the uh, to the runoff, or not the runoff, but the water uh, uh, plans. And we had extensive discussion. You know, we had Ms. Lauder was there, uh, Mr. Sadler, Mr. McClory, uh Attorney Feely, and all of, of, you know, we were all present and we went you know, into extended discussion and you know, we felt very strongly on our position and ultimately uh, you know, there was some attempt of compromise on the top side of the town, but Mr. Trout, you know, just made the determination saying, look, no, we've got to get this thing absolutely resolved and you tell us what you're going to, you know, what is it you're looking for and do it. And that's what Mira then was presenting here today. So, you know, we have a situation, and at the last time we were here, we were referencing that time is of the essence. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, Mr. Hardiman is on vacation, but, you know, there has been basically an approach in terms of, okay, tell us what it is, and we'll provide it. And you're talking to Mira earlier today, and she says she's totally confident that you know she can deal with Mr. Hardman in terms of the comments that remain there and do what has to be done. And that's you know, again in line with the trouble family operation of the business. Okay, tell us what we're going to want and we'll do it. So our, our hope tonight is that you know time is of the essence. And if we could get a final determination on this with the understanding that we feel very comfortable and confident that whatever comments uh, Mr. Hardman has, uh, Mira will be able to meet with him and address those comments. The bulk, everything that's been done is in accordance with what the town is looking for. And that's what's been provided here on the revised plans here tonight. So that, that's basically you know, what our, our hope is and what we're looking for tonight. All right. uh, we'll start with Mr. Fowler. Well, Mr. Plunkett, that was right from the pulpit. <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate that because I agree with everything you've said about that. It, it, it is a, uh, <clears throat> a, crown, a jewel on River Road. And the service that they've given to the town has been going on for years. Look at some of the plaques on along the road with the Minutemen. I think you'll see some names that strike right to home. Yeah. All right. So that's the history of the family. And the family has continued to do this. That's not to say that we have to look the other way. But this gentleman doesn't look the other way. He's done a great job. This plan should be approved. It should be approved. Ms. Vera, uh, I appreciate all the work that you've done in this. It's frustrating sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, when will Mr. Hademan be back, do we know? Wednesday. Wednesday, OK. Um, for now, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Mr. Duffy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I guess one of the questions that I, I might have, I, I, I've looked at all the waivers, and I, I mean, I don't, there's only one that, um, in this day and age, in, the, in this day of LEDs, is a waiver for a lighting plan. And... Um, only because uh, LEDs are a lot brighter than most than most lights, and you know you could have a LED light 
500 feet away and it could be blinding you. So I was just wondering, I was curious why you wanted to just, uh, why you were looking for a waiver on the lighting plan. Well, we, we're not looking for a way. I'll, I'll let Mira uh, address it, but you know, bottom line is the zone and bylaw relative to lighting will be complied with, that there will be zero leakage. Uh, you know, so it will be fully compliant with the zone and bylaw relative to you know, the light emitted from the site. And uh, I, I will ask Mary to follow up with the specifics of the waiver itself. Okay, I guess if there's a problem, I, if somebody says, hey, there's a couple of lights over there that are, that are shining in my living room window, and you know, what, what do we do? That would be that. That would be my only concern with yeah, that. Then, you know? then if, if that were the case, we wouldn't be in compliance with our zone right. bylaw relative to. No, I'm not saying anybody would do anything intentionally. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying it happens. Right. You know. Yeah. And and then uh, on the rest of the town engineer's issues here, um, I, I I know that he's deferring a, um, a recommendation and uh, until you've met uh, um, s some of these um, some of these requirements here. Uh, how, where are we on those? So um, he's out until Wednesday. So oh, I see. Okay. I'm planning on meeting with him. I sent yeah. an email, but um, right. I'm hoping to meet with him this week. It looks like a number of them are taken care of by the fire department, uh, anyways. But yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and they look like kind of you know kind of like um, um, just some technical type corrections. Right. Very a minor. Of, yeah. 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 I think the just the yeah. stormwater one was the only one that I wanted clarification from him. Yeah. Um, I, I also agree with Mr. Fowler uh, that the Trail Brook uh, Golf Course is, is, a, is a jewel in town. It's, a, it's, it's absolutely beautiful up there. Played there many times. Um, and um, I, I, I am, um, I guess I am okay, Mr. Chairman, um, but do we hold out for, a, for a, an approval from town engineering? I guess that would be my question. In other words, can we make a vote tonight to keep the keep the ball rolling, um, subject to um, subject to a clarification with uh, town engineer? Okay. Uh, Mr. Fatai. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple of questions I had is um, the sign that's there presently on site is that going to stay? We'll probably be replaced with a new sign. Okay. Uh, that one reflects tennis operations on it. Yeah. So, yeah, I was there yesterday and seen the sign. I'm like, I don't think the plan is to keep it there. I thought you wanted to get some new signage, and if you did, to what degree and what size and all that stuff because of the yeah, it would be signage. basically in the same size, roughly as that. Maybe you know, a, um, a light on it for the yeah. nighttime, but not a you know something that you see on Main Street here, sure. really. Okay. Very um, low key. Yeah, I guess so. So, with along those same lines, with the new access road going up, there'll be enough signage, like you mentioned, for people to direct them to the correct right. spots, yeah. right? So there'll be signage on both sides of yeah. that driveway. So the, the main place. middle, the middle, or the, the new driveway going up to the to the new building in the back there, yeah, is going to be only for golf tournaments, right? And no, the, the the new parking lot up by where the cell tower is, yeah. That will be the day-to-day -day operations. Um, you know, if you come to play, if, you know, tea time on a Tuesday, okay. that's where you would park. Right. The existing parking lot is what would be used for tournaments. Tournaments. Okay. Yes. I got you. I'm good. So my last question, you know, and, and um, was regarding the fire department. I know we we are we putting two hydrants in or more. So there's an existing hydrant there. Okay. Um, originally, I had a note that it would be removed but Captain Sawicki wanted to keep that. Right. So we're just gonna shift that, because right now it's kind of in the middle of the pavement area. Yep. So we'll shift it out of the pavement area, and he wanted another hydrant for the upper parking lot area, the new parking lot. So we'll, right. we'll add one as okay. well. So one additional hydrant. I had met with him today, and um, he had said at least two, if not three, depending upon you know the carrying of hose to the facility. but. He thought that two would be sufficient, but yeah. uh, I guess while the ground is open, if it's going to be easy to put in another one, maybe you do that on, on the fly or something. But uh, so, with that, I think I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to echo Mr. Plunkett's uh, 
you know, uh, evaluation of Charles Brook. It's a great facility and, and been great to the town of Tuxbury and its high school students for years, like you said. So uh, uh, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, just to make a note, Mr. Chairman can uh, participate because you guys only came in once. <laughs> um, and as long as he's reviewed or will review the minutes from our previous meeting, he can participate because you know, he's not uh, too many meetings out. Okay. So, good. Um, so, I, I will echo um, the sentiments. I mean, ever since I moved to town, I've been playing Trollbrook. So, um, it's definitely a course that's um, part of the core culture of this town. Um, so, a couple, I just had a couple of questions about the waivers that are being requested. Um, so, and, and forgive me, Mr. Chairman, if I'm misunderstanding what that means, but so you want to put in a new sign, but you, you're not submitting a signage plan at this time. Is that something that will come later once you have an idea of what that sign will be? Exactly, yeah. And you're not, um, the only one that I think is a, a potential concern is the landscape plan um, waiver requested for that. That's something where, um, you know, where you, if you're not a minimum of 20 feet from the neighbors, you know, there's potential impact of your parking operations um, noise and, and headlights and whatnot interfering with the neighbors. Um, what's your reason for asking, requesting a waiver on the landscape plan? Um, I, I just don't. 26 acres of uh, landscape. I guess you know this would be a unique situation that day. It's it's a large area and it's it's basically 90 percent green space and in and the. Paved area going back into where the cell tower is is basically going to pull the day-to-day -day usage of cars away from that front area along uh, River Road back away. So the, so it's going to be you know behind where the building is going to still remain the building, but rather than being utilized for tennis, it's going to be utilized for the new uh, usage of the. Uh, you know, the uh, golf simulators, but that parking space is going to be behind there, and you're surrounded by, by green space. I mean, I'll, I'll, Mira, if you want to. Yeah, you can see there. Um, there's just trees all around it. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to have to pull, either pull the mic off the um, podium, or I think it's your only choice, actually. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. so this new parking lot's pretty much surrounded by uh, trees on all sides. Okay. Uh, those were the only two things that stood out to me. Okay. Uh, all right, so for me, um, again, I don't, don't want to carry your water for you, but along the same lines, the front parking lot's not changing. It's already there. Right. So that's one of the other reasons why I wouldn't have an issue with the, the that 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 twenty foot because you're not doing anything. It's already there. That's what everybody has. Right. Plus the fact, as you just alluded to, the headlights, those kind of things are actually going to be reduced because that isn't now the primary parking lot. The primary par parking lot is now internal to the site, so it's actually a it's actually a benefit or a reduction from what you're already having there right now. So I, that's why I have no issue with it. Uh, I'm not sure the other members if that's their reason, but um, that's why I don't mind because it exists as it is now and it's gonna be less than it was before um, under this proposal. So um, for that one, to potentially just to, as a belt and suspender issue uh, to address Mr. Duffy's question on the lighting, um, just an added, you know, the, the Plenty Board reserves the right to you know, review the lighting if there's an issue. Yeah. That way it covers Mr. Duffy's issue when we retain some, uh, some control. Um, for me, the only other ones, you guys have seen the list that's here, right? For uh, the waivers and conditions. Okay. So just because I'll, I'll hit those first. One of the ones that I wanted, and I think my, the numbering might be off, because we go five, five. Five on the front and then five on the back. So. I just changed the numbers, so yeah. the last one on here is now 10, so this one would be 11. 
Um, if in the future it is determined that speed on site is a concern, the board reserves the right to require additional speed reduction measures, including but not limited to speed bumps. If it becomes an issue, we just want to be able to say, yeah, we brought it up before, you know, you didn't do it yet, but looks like you kind of need to now. All right? And then the last one, just to address uh, what Mr. Fatai was commenting on, um, the infield determination on number of hydrants coordinated with fire department. So if you've got the ground torn up and they say three makes more sense, you'll, you'll deal with it, basically. Does that make sense? That's fine. All right. Yeah. So that takes care of those. Uh, my only, and this is to address Mr. Duffy's other comment, is that you know we really have been trying to not do those conditional decisions. I, I'm okay when we do them. And, you know, if we need to, that's fine. It's just you know you guys have a couple of things here at least that you know are problematic if they turn out to not be something you could settle up, which is Mr. Hardiman's number six and number ten. So I mean, you do you feel confident that? You know that can be addressed and it's not going to be an issue because if it is you're kind of you know out of luck in terms of if you're not meeting those requirements what do you do right so we did uh, dig a test pit last week um, that's number six and then their number 10 is the one you know that you have to make showings and that's what I want to talk you, with yeah, okay but in the event you can't once we close this there's no coming back here, so anything that you'd ask us for is done. You know what I mean. So that's one of the reasons why I don't, you know, I get leery of these, you know, because once we're finished, we're finished. You know, and we're kind of putting you off, and it's between you and Mr. Hardiman at that point, and there's no more, you know, requests with us, no more. So if you guys, you know, you feel comfortable that whatever's left to do does not require coming back to see us, that's. That's up to you guys. That's fine. If the rest of the board wants to go forward, you know, and do a conditional, that's fine. You know, at your request. Um, if I remember correctly, it's three out of five, anyways. So, uh, no, is this four out of five? This was filed under the old bylaw, so it's special permit. Okay. Pretty much everything. Right. So it's four. four. The land disturbance specifically is three out of five, but everything else is four. Okay. So you know, I, I'll just throw it to you guys. You know, if that's what you, you know, if that's the request you want to make, and the board's, you know, amenable to it. I just want to make sure that that's, that part's clear. And, you know, you know where you're going after this. Yeah. No, it, it, it's something that you know we're confident that it can be addressed. And you know, Mr. Trow's approach at this point in time has been: we'll do what has to be done in order to get this yeah. moving forward. But you have that sort of in the back of your head, Plan B, if it turns out okay. Yeah. All, right. all right. Otherwise, I'm all, I'm all set. Otherwise. Uh, open up to the audience. Anyone in the audience with any questions, comments, or concerns on this? Seeing no one rise, I'll bring it back to the board. Um, before we close it, I just want to make sure that is, is that what people, is that what the board wants to make a conditional decision? Yeah. Um, if, if, if you're telling me that these, these number of items that um, that uh, town engineer, that you've already had discussions with them about probably all of these, I would imagine. Several of them are ch already checked off because they, they, he defers to the fire department and so forth, right? That you are not going to have a problem with, with these, then I, I'm, I'm okay with the conditional uh, approval. Mr. Vitae? Yeah, I'm also, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know you want to get moving forward. Um, but there's really nothing that we did to delay the process to get to where we are today. You know, I mean, uh, it's been a long time since you came in front of us. I know you had, at that point you wanted to get going as fast as possible. Unfortunately, the delays were, you know, with the uh, drainage and so forth. I believe those are resolved now, I believe so. But um, I'm willing to go forward and, 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 uh, and vote on this tonight. So, Chair? I might like to echo Mr. Patali's comments. I'm okay to move forward. Okay. All right. So. With that, what is the pleasure of the board? Motion. Make a motion to close the hearing. Uh, oh, motion made, seconded, or vice versa? Yep. Uh, motion made, seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. We'll do the waivers first. Um, as discussed, we have seven waivers uh, sections 9431, 9432, 9434, 
5171, 5421-9470A, uh, and 5334 via section 9462. And that's the one I made the extra comment on yep. retaining the right. Okay. So those are the waivers as submitted and requested. Uh, do we have a motion on the waivers? A motion to grant the, uh, the waivers as requested. All right. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. <laughs> Uh, now as to the site plan special permit land, disturb land disturbance permit, I do those separate, right? You want those separate? Yeah, we can do them separate. Yeah, it can be separate. There's just the land disturbance pulled out, everything else can go together. All right, so site plan special permit, what's the pleasure of the board? I can make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve the site plan special permit for 160 to 170 River Road as discussed. All right, so that will include the 12 conditions, um, the 10 previously shown, and the two discussed this evening. Yeah. Correct? Second. All right, motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify, I'm um, sorry, and that is also, I'm sorry, so there's actually a 13, which is that you'll uh, finish up and um, get the sign-offs from Mr. Hardeman. Yeah. Sorry, so that was actually the last one. Okay, so with those conditions, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Second. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries unanimous. And then as to the land disturbance permit. To make a motion, motion, Mr. Chairman, of, to approve the land disturbance permit for right. 160, 170 second. River Road. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries unanimously as well. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mayor. All right, moving on to agenda item D, 1879 Main Street. The applicant has requested to be continued to our 912 meeting. We have them penciled in at seven o'clock. So we have a motion to continue that hearing to seven o'clock on September 12th. So moved. So a motion made seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Moving on to agenda item uh, E, 30 Commerce Way. Uh, the applicant has also requested to be continued to our September 12th meeting. We have them listed here at 7.05. Uh, do we have a motion to continue them to 7.05? So moved. Motion made, actually I need a second. That's the only one you can't vote on oh, because sorry. they've been here too many times. So from the rest of us, I need a second from- Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. That brings us to agenda item F, 135 Pleasant Street, Town of Tewksbury, uh, signed special permit. We have a motion to waive the public reading. So moved. Motion made, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Could you state your name for the record? The floor is yours. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jason Perillo. I'm with Pablaki Sign Company, and we're here tonight seeking your approval for a new monument sign for the Central Elementary School campus. Um, this sign would include uh, an electronic uh, message display, just like the high school. The sign's located on Pleasant Street near the uh, entrance to the, the uh, campus, uh, also near uh, the corner of Pleasant and Concrete Road. Uh, the sign would be set on a brick uh, base, um, and the sign is uh, part of the Tewksbury Elementary School Project directed by the Tewksbury Elementary School Project Building Committee, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, in deference to his service on the uh, Elementary School Building Committee, even though he's not our representative, he was on there, we'll start with Mr. Champ. Um, I have no... No comments or questions at the time, other than this is um, the addressing and layout of the sign is very much consistent with what we have now at the high school. And our intent was to carry that forward. Based on what I see here, I believe that uh, that is what's being done. All right. Uh, we'll move to Mr. Duffy. I have no, uh, I, I have no problem with the sign as it, as it is, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Fatalia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of comments I had. So the sign is larger than it's allowed, so you're going to need a waiver, correct? Correct. Okay. I'll see that on the paperwork here. Um, I think it's in a great location. Um, I think you can see it both ways. So
So my question to you, sir, is um, with reference to the sign, is that a, um, a good sign or is it a mediocre sign or the best sign we can have for that particular location? It, it is um, a diatronic reader board, which is one of the industry leader. So Say that again? They're, they're the industry leader in electronic message displays, so it's a, it's a very good okay. product. Yes. So we're spending a lot of money on that school. Yep. I don't want to put a second second hand oh, sign absolutely. in there that's going to have problems down the road. Absolutely. People are going to be going by that on a regular basis. A lot of parents, a lot of kids going there every day, buses and, okay. and so forth. So, no, so my concerned. my real concern is that we're putting in a first class sign. Absolutely. And um, you know, um, uh, hope it's going. I mean, I like the, I like the design. I see the base is already there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to put that above it. Correct. Right, attack it, attach yep. it, and so forth. Um, yeah, so I'm all set with Jim. Thank you. Right. Mr. Fowler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, only two questions I have are, one, uh, the office would have the ability to reduce the, uh, the, the brightness, for lack of a better word, and yes. coloration. Yes. Um, the only thing that the red um, we try to stay away from red, but we've had some of them have come in, and um, because it sometimes interferes with um, public service, fire, you know, lights and sirens, not sirens, but lights on fire trucks, ambulances, police cars. So we don't want to create any problems like that. So if there is uh, any feedback from public safety, You'd be able to maintain and yes. remedy that. Yes, correct. That's all. Thank you. Thank so you. My only, one of my questions is, in comparison to the one at the high school, how how is this compared to that size-wise? Do you know? You know, I'm only going by just driving by it, and, I, and I, my first thought was this might be actually smaller. This one. Not, I don't know for sure though. Um, of the actual height and width of the actual, just the message display. Um, I would say it's certainly not larger than that, but I just couldn't say for sure. Well, it's actually, that's my issue, yeah. is that proportionally this looks odd to me. The base seems so much bigger than the sign itself that it almost makes the sign seem small. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm curious about whether or not it's as large as the one at the high school, mm -hmm. because I would not have a problem with it being the same as the one at the high school. Okay. If this is actually, because it's just, it looks, I mean, like everybody just pointed out, we now have two schools there. Um, this, is, this is a real sort of you know, centerpiece of the town, and it just looks a little odd to me. Ms. Lowe, did you have a comment? If I might, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the high school sign does have some concrete on the top of it, too, so I wonder if that's why this looks particularly small in comparison. Um, this one is just planning to be an electronic message board sign mounted on top of the um, what's actually already constructed, the brick base. So I think that might be, that could be why it looks like it might be a little bit smaller. Okay. Well, I mean, we're already gonna issue the, the waiver, and I guess my only point would be, I would have no problem issuing the waiver that would allow up to this sign being as large as the one at the high school, if it's not. Just to get that out of the way, if it turns out that that's the case and anybody's interested. Because it just feels like there could be a little bit more and it wouldn't look out of place. You know, when you look at it, it's just, it's, the, Well, you know, I thank you for saying that because the letters on the sign do they correspond in size to the letters on the base? They could this on, on the on the message display portion of the sign. Those letters can be any could be changed change to, you know, larger or smaller um, than the letters on the base. So, yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I have a picture of the high school sign. Mm -hmm. I think what you'll see if you want to have a look is there's a lot more. Besides the yeah. message board, thing there's a lot more yeah. going that's on why. there. That's the, so that's the sign the is one. actually, the actual messaging part of the sign. Yeah. So I, I think, think your point is correct. That it, it, maybe it's just it visually seems that way. That mm -hmm. chimney is almost 10 feet tall. Yeah. Mm. My daughter's 5'6". You know, she's about halfway up there. Yeah. All right. All right. So, I mean, I, I think my Thank point you. stands, though, if it turns out it that this one's a little smaller than that one, 
up to whatever the size of the high school one is. But, you know, if that turns out to be, I'm fine with. That way you don't have to come back if it turns out okay. somebody in the field kind of looks at it and thinks, hmm, you know, now I'm not so sure. Um, so we, Yeah, we can look into that. All right. So um, everybody up here is all set. I'll open it up to the audience. Anyone in the audience with any questions, comments, or concerns? I just seeing, one, one more comment. Yep, seeing no one in the audience, I'll bring it back to the board, Mr. Fatai. Um, time frame to get the sign constructed and in place? Um, probably six to eight weeks. Really? Okay. But it'll be in place before the school. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously we have to wait out the appeal period and so before we get the final yeah. permit, but, but, but they not the may football decide season. to go yeah. ahead right now, you know, after tonight. Yeah. You may catch some of the football season, but I'm not quite sure, probably, but... Be nice, yeah. yeah so. Okay. And the sign that the printed numbers here on the sign, on the base, they're going to be very legible as far as people driving by? I believe so. They're, they're aluminum letters mounted to, you know, the bricks, so they should okay. read mm -hmm. quite well. 3 eighths cut aluminum stud mount letters. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, the size is one thing, but, you know, yeah. vi visually going driving by it, I have a problem with some signs you do. Mm -hmm. They're up and you can't even read it because, you know, it's they're small. But. I think there'll be enough contrast. Okay. To... Good. I'm off there. All right. I do have one question. Um, are there, I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead. Are there any lights, will there be any lights on the number system on the base? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know that there's a plan to do that, but I can look into that. Because um, it wouldn't make any sense to have yeah. numbers there if there are no lights. Yeah, there on. should be. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to ask about that. We talking about like the ground spots, the just ground, shooting yeah. up at it. Yeah, right. The wiring's already there, Mr. Chairman. That's right. Yeah. Wiring is already sure. there. Yeah, but you know, why do it? Why do it? So, why not do it now? So it, we'll add, we can add that into the you know, though it's not shown here that you know the, the sort of those floodlights that just shine onto the sign yep. to illum uh, to illuminate it. Yeah, uh, and obviously not so bright that they'd overpower sure. the visibility of the sign. Of course. Yeah. Right. Okay. You guys are in charge of that, so yep. you do that. You know, do the after, right thing. After daylight Absolutely. savings, you know, time yeah. starts. They'll be getting out of school. It'll be dark. You'll need the lights. Right. So. All Thank right. You. With that, we all said otherwise. Yeah. All right. What is the pleasure of the board? Um, uh, cool. Motion. All right. Motion made and seconded. Yes. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries. So we have a waiver for the sign size. We we'll do that first. Motion to approve. All right, and then just up, the added language that I asked on Yes, with the, with, with the up, up to, to high school si uh, yeah. sign size. All right, so we have a motion made second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. Now as to the sign special permit itself. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, there's um, a couple of, there's another um, in this one? waiver that would need. Um, they are proposing a full color electronic message sign and currently the bylaw only allows for amber lighting. Okay, so we'll, we'll grant them the waiver for that because yep. obviously we want... Just wanted that on the record. High tech, not low tech. Um, so we have the motion on that waiver as well. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the waiver as discussed. We have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All, right. All those opposed, motion carries. That moves us to the signed special permit itself. So do we have a motion on that? So moved. Motion made. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Great. Good. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Forward Appreciate to seeing it. it. All right. That gives it, uh, brings us to old business. Any old business anyone wishes to discuss? Mr. Chairman, I, I actually do want to discuss the project up on uh, Main Street, the old preferred distributors. I don't know if we have any had any uh, updates from um, Ms. Lauda from them at all on the side up with the old preferred distributors, is that? I have not had any uh, uh, further updates. Um, I did communicate to them that whatever they are planning to do, that they should send it to the board and not vice versa, as um, Mr. Duffy and, and others pointed out, that they don't want to come up with a plan on the spot. They yeah. want them to come to the board prepared with recommendations as to how to restore the site um, while they're deciding what to do sure. with it. Reason being is I drive by there regularly and there's a gigantic boulder. Looks like it's on the sidewalk almost, but it's just not quite on the sidewalk. You know, I mean, I hope they're not planning on leaving. Jones running from it. 
<laughs> it's, it's a giant sign. They have equipment now. The big dozers moved. So I hope they're not planning on leaving it there because it's just not appropriate leaving it right there. So, but uh, all right, that's one. Old Any other thing. old business? Hearing none. Any new business anyone wishes to discuss? I'm sure I have one new business item, and I believe um, I heard through the grapevine that we may be losing our residence at the post office. I, I heard that the post office is looking to move and relocate out of Tewksbury. Um, the letter carriers themselves may be moving to Woburn for um, downsizing. Not that we'll be lo losing a post office because they got a picky post office in town. But I thought the last I heard is they're planning on moving um, the letter carriers and the trucks out of town to Woburn. So uh, sure. I think um, it may be sometime in the beginning of early next year. So, but that's what I hear through the grapevine. So uh, hopefully they'll they won't. But um, we got to make sure that they do uh, leave a post office in town. So but, uh, not okay. Not leave. Uh, we had no correspondence in the package, so that takes care of that. That brings us to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion made. We have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. Good evening. We'll see you in September.